Hello everyone! In this video, not only do I want to tell you about how matches are made, but also to make my own matches. After that, I will check how they will differ from shop bought ones. Let us start off with a little bit of history. First predecessors of modern matches were invented in ancient China. Those early matches were used only to simplify the process of starting a fire and it was just ordinary sulfur spread into thin sticks. In Europe, matches began to appear in 19th century and, in its early form, they were very dangerous because they could light up upon friction against any surface, which was quite dangerous, as they could even light up in a box of matches, having rubbed against each other. First safe matches appeared in 1855 and they were invented by Swedish chemist John Lundström. Since then, they have practically remained unchanged. These Swedish matches are the very ones I am going to make in this video. Matches making starts with the simplest step, which is preparing the wooden sticks, which are also called stripes. Such sticks are most frequently made from aspen, but since I don't have it, I am going to use ordinary birch toothpicks. sticks. The first step of making matches is soaking sticks in fire retardant, that is, in chemical that prevents wood smoldering. The thing is, when wood burns down, the leftover charcoal that continues to smolder, turning into light ash that can cause lots of inconveniences when it gets onto clothes or valuable items. To prevent unwanted outcomes when using matches, they get soaked in 2% ammonium dihydrogen phosphate. After soaking and drying sticks, we can see that the charred heads don't smolder, which is a lot more convenient. I have quite ancient matches, which are more than 100 years old. They were made in Revel, which was the name of the modern-day Tallinn during monarchy era until 1917. They still burn well, but because of not being soaked in fire retardant, the burned down matches heads fall off very quickly and keep burning, which can cause ignition or even fire. That is the reason why soaking in fire retardant is such a necessary measure to take. Nevertheless, sticks have to be soaked in combustible liquid that will simplify ignition of wood and consume most energy. Most frequently, paraffin is used for those purposes. I melted down a paraffin candle and dipped chopsticks. They look like a deep fryer and wooden chips which are fried in it. That's not all. After cooling of the soaked matches, we need to apply combustible coating to the tips of the sticks, which are commonly called match heads. The so-called match head is a complex mix of chemicals that contain from 4 to 10 different chemicals. I am sticking to the simplest classical recipe in this video. First, I weighted down 39% of fine sand. Do not be surprised to add sand into a mixture for matches heads is necessary to slow down the burning process, otherwise matches will burn down too quickly or even explode. Then I add about 5% of sulfur to the matches batter and also 11% of gelatin that will serve as both fuel and glue. We also need to add about 1% of potassium dichromate and 1% of sodium alginate to improve viscosity. I added a little water to the mixture and I am beginning to mix the chemicals. Once the needed chemicals have dissolved, I add the most important chemical, which is potassium chloride. It plays a role of strong oxidizing agent, that is an agent that makes the mixture burn. Now all the chemicals have to be mixed evenly. And basically we only need to spread the batter on the tips of the sticks. To color the gray mixture, we can add iron oxide or another pigment. While matches are drying up, we need to do another important thing. We need to make a match box and a striking strip that will be used to light up matches. I have made a box in advance, simply having glued together cardboard pieces following a matches box pattern. To make a striking strip, I am mixing red phosphorus with PVA glue. After that, I spread it on the side of the match box. When the batter dries up, the striking strips are ready. By the way, the matches have also dried up, so we can put it all together. I decided to make a branded matches box and label it Toysoiki, 
Once everything has been put together, the moment of truth arrives. Let us see if my DIY matches will light up with the help of my DIY match packs. 3, 2, 1. It burns. My handmade matches burn not worse than factory made ones. Chemical reactions involved in this process are quite simple. Upon friction of match heads against the red phosphorus surface, potassium chloride from the matches heads actively oxidizes the red phosphorus in the area of contact. This temperature triggers a reaction between sulfur and potassium chloride in the match head. After that, gelatin comes into reaction. Generated heat, both paraffin the match is soaked in. After that, it ignites, setting the wooden stick on fire too. As you can see, well familiar matches are not as simple as they may seem. Anyway, I don't recommend you to make DIY matches because of safety reasons. Do not try this at home. Nevertheless, let us compare our DIY matches and factory made ones under a microscope. As we can see, the structure of both matches is very similar. There are bubbles even in factory made matches which do not deteriorate their burning that much. Finally, we can conclude that the process of making matches isn't that difficult. However, humans have used these tools for starting fire for over 100 years. By the way, those dangerous matches that can be light up when rubbed against any surface are still sold in England and USA. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. It is a cool online learning community with over 1500 classes in video editing, photography and of course in chemistry. And it even has classes in math, physics and other sciences. I think that there will definitely a class on Skillshare for you. And you can take a class, project or even teach a class. Premium membership begins around $10 a month for everything on Skillshare. But I have a link for free months free trial in the description box. If you want to improve your knowledge in chemistry or for example filmmaking, definitely you should use that free trial. I personally found Skillshare very useful for improving my skills in photography and video shooting.